I mean, she just has a crush on him. It's not like maybe waiting to see if it goes further. Why spill the milk if nothing happens, if nothing comes from it? I just love that you say <laughs> spill the milk. Like I was like, he's going to say spill the beans, of course, because when you're giving away information, <laughs> it's spill the beans. Are they called analogies? Yeah. I guess you take different ones and just jumble them together. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome, welcome back, back to Give It To Be Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I am John. And, and we're, we're your, your gracious, gracious, gracious host. host. What? You were a little flat when saying Me? gracious. And you just ruined the whole thing. Oh, I ruined the whole thing. I got a question. You ever like a chest pain after like maybe drinking too much coffee? Too much coffee? I can't tell if it's because I worked out chest or if like... I do have a little chest pain. How much coffee have you had? Today, not that much. But like last night, I had some chest pain. No, I, I don't... was also playing Call of Duty, though. So I could have been like, I think you are getting chest pain from stress and anxiety. From John. stress. You do. Like, I think the older that you're getting, you're just your anxiety is getting worse. And you do it to yourself. You're like, you know what? Let me look up things that are going to like terrify me. Ignorance I don't know bliss. what my algorithm is algorithm is but it's yeah it's all horrible stuff i can't say that i've ever felt like i was gonna have a heart attack from drinking too much coffee but you know how sometimes though you do have like a weird pain and you're like this is it like, like, uh, yeah like <laughs> in your heart or your head like sometimes my brain like i'll get like a really sharp pain and i'm like oh god I'm, I'm i'm going down we already know how we're gonna go unless like a freak accident happens how you know how you're gonna go my lungs your lungs it's scary you gotta get that taken care of your asthma well, mine's definitely going to be a heart attack, I think. You think? Probably. I have high cholesterol. It's Has anyone in your family had a heart attack? No, because they've always had like open bypass surgeries. <laughs> oh. it, it was they got to the they got to the point where they needed surgery. I mean, though. my dad also had open heart surgery, so we're just we're maybe we're both fucked. Knock on wood. To be honest, we're all going to fucking die. Whatever. What's his name? In the we're Departed. We're really starting off this episode. It's <laughs> so morbid. So dark. What is uh? What does he say in the Departed? Jack Nicholson. He's like, we're all gonna die. Like, act accordingly. It was such a badass line. Uh, it doesn't sound too epic to me. <laughs> yeah, he was just like cool about it when he. Maybe it was it. like the way that he said it, like with the music and the scene. It was right after he slammed Leo's hand down when he had that brace. He like slammed it against the pool table to make sure he wasn't oh. wearing a wire. A oh, fucking wow. liar. Was it like based in Boston? Oh, you what? What do you? I'm you watched the movie like three months ago. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson. He was undercover. Was Brad Pitt in it? No, no, Brad Pitt was not in it. <laughs> I don't. Uh, Mark Wahlberg was in it. Did I Alec stay awake Baldwin. the whole time? It took you like three days to watch it. Alec Baldwin was in Matt it. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. He was in it. Was it like his he first was, movie? No, I'm so. Yeah, annoyed. I think it was one of his first movies. No, it wasn't. Whose movie? Whose Matt first Damon. movie? Damon. Are you? Goodwill Hunting. Oh yeah, that's we're not really talking cool. about Goodwill Hunting. Okay, they're, co- they're detectives and cops in Boston, Boston. I gotta see a trailer for it. I don't Yo. remember. We watch a lot of movies. We watched a movie recently, and it was about dogs. And Kobe was so invested in it. It was so cute. I got one million videos of him just watching the movie. I don't think I've ever seen him do that, where he's like engaged. The whole time. I don't care. I'm still so upset that I broke down this whole movie for you and you have no idea what I'm talking about when you were the one who actually Let me look it. it up. Let me look it up. Goodwill Hunting. No. No. <laughs> the Departed. That's what Robin Williams. That was a really good movie, though. Oh, yeah. That was a good movie. I remember that movie. Wasn't Matt Damon in that, too? Yes. He wrote and directed it with Ben the Affleck. Departed. 2006? Man, I don't remember. I don't remember this. I, I think I That's fell asleep. That's crazy. You don't I think I fell this. asleep. Well, in other I- news, in other news, something exciting that's happening for us. We what, John? Are going to be <laughs> doing a live AMA at the Beverly Center in what? Beverly Hills. What's an AMA? Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Which it probably won't be, you know, anything. But yeah, I don't know. So if any of you guys are local and want to come see us in person, we'll be at the Beverly Center sometime in November. We'll keep you posted. We don't have the exact date, but yeah, it's gonna be like early November at some point. So are you be, nervous? I am very nervous. You'll be fine. I think you're not nervous because you know I'm more nervous than you. So for some reason no, you're like cool with it. But I bet you if I was as cool as a cucumber, I'm not you would be nervous like, because number one, we have each other, and number two, my because hands are sweating right I've now. I've given now. As a maid of honor, two 
toast at weddings. And I feel like those are very nerve wracking. Goo, know Goo knows what I'm talking about because he gave the toast at our wedding. I've literally Have turned you ever down. Given a- I've turned down being a best man because I was too nervous to give a speech. You've literally turned down the role. Yeah. So it's not because you were like, oh, I don't want the responsibilities. Like the it's the speech part. Oh my god, I'm so bad at public speaking. It's I'm so horrible. I mean, I used to be so bad at it. Like when I was in college, I would have to drink before. Like that's how nervous I was. I was like, I need liquid courage. I can't do it. And I would get up there, shake. I couldn't do it. That's what I'm worried about shaking. You'll be fine. It's going to be a good, like, I need it to happen, you know? Yeah. Face your fucking fears. But that's, there's no way that that's your biggest fear. Sharks are or sure. s- skydiving. But it's still like a, it's a fear because it's like a, something that can. It's a new, th- new thing. It's sure. like, you just have to like flex that muscle, you know? It's not a muscle. Because it won't be the last time that you'll be chatting in front of a crowd. We oh. should take this pod on the road. I don't know. Maybe. We should do it. I guess Let's see. If you guys on... want us to take it on the road, take it. <laughs> John's if you guys already want nervous. us to take it on the road, you let me know. <laughs> Anything else going on this week? Anything fun? Well, something exciting. We signed with CAA, Creative yes. Artist, Artist Agency. Agency. So. You know, even though the strike's going on right now, we're not doing anything in that space, but it's, you know, to, to get some other people on our team to help us grow. In the film realm, you know, so we have a team on our short film side and just expanding into the traditional space. And we're excited for that. Yeah. Also helping us in the digital realm as well. Right. But so that's that's really exciting. That is us. exciting. I'm super excited to just like be growing our team and to be like trying new opportunities in the workspace. Another thing this week is Kobe. I don't know what is going on with him, but he's shedding more than I've ever seen him shed before. Uncontrollably. Yeah. Do you think it's because it's still so hot here? I don't know. He's getting old. I think the older they are, the more they shed. I don't think that's accurate. I mean, he's almost 10. That has not, age, I don't think, has anything to do with shedding. Like, look at Luke. He's a shepherd. He sheds a, a ton. He's two. I don't, I don't he's know. Three. I'm not a fucking vet. I'm making shit up. I have no oh, idea. So, yeah, you're just like assuming things. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Can we just move on? You for want the to love just of jump God? into questions? Yes, please. And today's episode is sponsored by Daily Harvest. Hungry but can't decide what to eat? Daily Harvest has got your back. They keep my stomach and my freezer full with a smorgasbord of options. We're talking fruit and veg packed smoothies, comforting soups, hearty harvest bowls, and even flatbreads for those snack attacks. They've got options for every time of the day, like forage or rolls and bites that'll make your taste buds dance. Say goodbye to the meal planning headache. Daily Harvest has so many easy to prep options that you won't even have to think about what to cook next. No more shopping, chopping, or post cooking cleanup. Just delicious, ready to go meals whenever you need them. Keep yourself and your freezer full with these hassle free delights from Daily Harvest. Head to dailyharvest.com slash straight to scoop up $65 off your first box. That's Daily Harvest dot com slash straight score big on savings and big on flavor today all right let's jump into questions so this first one was one that we asked all of you and we're gonna well john is gonna read some responses after i read the question okay i'm dating a guy and he's friends with women he's had sex with and it makes me feel strange as i'm not friends with men i've had sex with can men and women be friends if they've had sex? Do I have anything to worry about or am I overreacting? I don't think that I am hanging out or friends with anyone who I've had sex with in the past. You better not you be. You better honest. not be. Um, Guess we know my answer to that. <laughs> but I but I I don't know. I I think again this is one of those things where it's not just black and white like is it, are you all in a small town group of high school? Like, is it a group of friends and it was a relationship 15, 20 years ago? I don't know. It's, What's, it's a, so there's a statute of limitations on when this, uh, yeah, occurred. meaning like if it was an ex from like high school and like you're all in the same friend group, like that's technically someone that you could have had sex with, but like you're all adults now. Maybe this person's married. Like, what are the other people's relationships? Like, are they single still? Are they flirting? I don't think that it's like black and white. So your response is, it, it depends. depends on the situation. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to read a couple. Ready? Once you've crossed that line, there's no going back to just being friends. There will always be sexual tension. Mm. I know that's up for debate. 
but people definitely, I get, there was a lot like saying, you'll never forget this or other people would be like, like this happened forever ago. Like they're just friends at this point. These types of friends are the first to disrespect your relationship and overstep boundaries. Like they're probably like too comfortable. Like they're already comfortable. Like I know, I know you, like I've seen you naked. Right. Like yeah, yeah. we got this history, I this I just, past. I think because I know situations of both that I'm like, I've seen it work in friend groups before. But so that's why I'm saying like, I, I just think it depends. Are you the type of person that's going to like, you know, overstep? Also, is this someone who are. like was a one night stand? Was it a hookup? Like, what was your relationship with this person? Did you love them? Did you like, how did you break up? Why did you break up? Like there's, I've just, it's so layered. It's not like, it's not that simple. Be worried. Not normal to be friends with anyone you've previously had sex with. Another one. No, the lines are blurred and there's nothing to stop them from crossing any boundaries. Propose a threesome and see how he vibes with the other girls. Then you'll know. All right. Let him know it makes you uncomfortable and his response will tell you all you need to know, which I think that's so smart. Because if you're if you are against it and talking to him about how you feel and then really just like, let me let me see I your facial that, expressions, yeah. your body language, your whole vibe. Because I think that's number one is expressing how it makes you feel because obviously like you know the dynamic of who these women are to him like what their maybe past relationships were and see kind of like what he how he receives that right flip side of that is at least he told you my boyfriend never told me and let me hang out with this woman many times and that's true too like he's being honest with he's you. respecting yeah, I mean, that's showing respect towards you. Be like, hey, just a heads up. Because again, like we've been at, at parties before with people that you've hooked up with in the past. Right. And you've told me, but it's not like you're intentionally going out and like hang out with that person and like being friends with them. No, but I also never know. It's like, is this a one time thing? I'm going to see this person or we'll hang out multiple times. And like, then if I didn't tell you in the beginning, I'm, am I in too deep to tell you later on? But like being in the same friend group or like being an acquaintance in a group is different than like being an active friend with someone too. You know, like, are they texting? Are they just hanging out in groups? Like, well, like, again, I have more questions. Everyone has a past, set some responsible boundaries and be confident. Confidence is sexy. I feel like that is weird as shit. I'd be so insecure about that every time they hung out. And then the last two is, if they've seen each other naked, they will always be able to picture each other naked. And the last one is backup plan, mm -hmm. which is interesting too. So like my whole stance on this is it depends on who you are. For me, no, I wouldn't be okay with that. I mean, in, call it insecure, call it like a confidence thing. But like, I don't, I'd be like, why do you, why do you need to be friends with this person? Right. You know? Like, I don't think that there is any reason that they should be hanging out at like hanging out outside of a friendship with you involved. You know what I mean? Like it does. Every situation is different. It depends on who you are and what you're comfortable with. But like when we're talking about our opinions on this topic, like, oh, yeah, I probably wouldn't be comfortable with you hanging out with somebody with the opposite sex, especially somebody that you hooked up with. Mm -hmm. Right. Again. And, and it's like, what is your definition of friend? Is it just like an acquaintance? Is it someone who you're hanging out with alone in right. a group? Like, what does that kind of look like? So there's a lot of like context involved in tension. So I don't know. Overall, it just depends. Only do like what you're comfortable with though. Like if it's something that makes you feel uncomfortable, trust your gut, like set those boundaries. Shall we move on? Let's do it. Should I tell my very close friend that I used to mess around with a guy she's had a crush on for years? We weren't friends at the time and this was about eight years ago. I just feel like a bad friend keeping this from her every time she brings him up. I haven't said anything since I don't think it's relevant, but it's eating me up inside. Should I tell her or just keep it to myself? I mean, she just has a crush on him. It's not like maybe waiting to see if it goes further. Why spill the milk if nothing happens, if nothing comes from it? Like you can have a crush on someone, but what if the guy doesn't like her? I just love that you say spill the milk. Like I was like, he's going to say spill the beans, of course, because when you're giving away information, it's spill the beans. But of course, you know, spill the milk. Oh. It's like people say, don't cry over spilled milk. Spill you, the milk. You know what you do? Don't spill the milk. You take like these, are they called analogies? Yeah. I guess you take different ones and just jumble them together. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> okay. So yeah, you're right. Like they're just, she just has a crush on this guy. So, but it, it it's like, are they going to date? Cause if she was going to date this guy, <laughs> should she inform him that they hooked up? Even so, if you're a close friend, I don't know. I just, I think it's weird. Not that I think it's weird. Cause not everyone's an open book, but if someone were to address a person to me, even if like we weren't friends when I hooked up with them at the time, but then they bring them up and they're like, Oh my God, so-and-so I'd be like, Oh yeah, I hooked up with them. Like how did, how did you not you already not, yeah, uh, address that? How did you not already bring that up? There's two ways of going about it. You could do that or you could not spill the milk. You know? <laughs> it's too late though. At this point, like the fact that you haven't already said it, I don't know that I would really go out of my way and like crush her dreams of ever, you know, being with this guy or maybe not say anything at all. You know, like if she really likes this person, why uh, spoil it for her? That's what I just said. Like, don't. It's it's already been long enough. Like, you don't have to say anything. Oh, so you're. Uh, oh, OK. All right. Cool. I was saying, like, if the first time he was brought up would have been the time to spill the milk. And talk, talk. How long has it been? <laughs> John. How long has it been? She hooked up with this guy eight years ago. How long has she been like all of a sudden she has a crush on this guy? You don't know. So it could just have happened. She's not saying like she's been having, she's had a crush on this guy for a long time. I don't know. She just oh, said, so I you're feel... assuming stuff too. You don't know. So we're both in agreement. Don't tell her. I just don't know that it would be like, it's necessary. Why is this like, so, so confusing? <laughs> you know what? Do what you want. I feel like my brain, like, our brains are not, not connecting, connecting today. today. No. no. I'm sweating. I don't know what's going on. Should we start over? I'm Alex, <laughs> your gracious, gracious host. <laughs> That's John, your other gracious, gracious host. Hello. John, sometimes he spills the milk. <laughs> I spill the milk sometimes. <laughs> okay. We're in a real we pickle. We didn't answer this one. Yeah, we did. Kind of. Uh, okay, next question. <laughs> Next question. Okay, cool. I think... Let's start over with the second question. Maybe we just answer every question and just say, it depends, do what you want. <laughs> yeah. it depends, do what you no want. No one could come after us. We're just, it depends. It depends on how long it's been. You didn't tell us that. Right. Like, how long has she had a crush on this guy and been bringing it up to you? Is she into it for like five months now? Like, yeah, you're in too deep. Like you said, I wouldn't say anything. Right. Cool. I, I just think it's something you should have addressed. I feel like we landed the plane. Cool. Let's, let's, next question. Let's get on the next plane. <laughs> next question. My girlfriend of two years just went on her friend's birthday trip to Cancun. At first, she mentioned her sister was going on the trip with her. I was totally okay with the trip, but fast forward four months to the night before the trip, and she mentions her sister is no longer going. My girlfriend is now going solo with the girls slash guys group. Is this a red flag? So one of her, her sisters not going with her on this trip, is she the only girl going? I don't think she's the only girl gro going. It's just a birthday trip and there's girls and guys going so her his girlfriend is now going on a birthday trip that girls and guys are going to be on because her sister can't go anymore i'd be like better get a companion flight because i'm coming with i mean i don't think that this is a red flag if if it's not a red flag <laughs> mm. i no, i don't think it's a red flag because her sister can't go like if it's her friend, I think it's weird that she didn't communicate to you that her sister wasn't going anymore. But like, I would communicate with your girlfriend about that and be like, why didn't you tell me? Dude, also, I don't give a flying fuck. We're married. Are they married? It's just girlfriend. No. Oh. oh my God. My girlfriend of two years just went on her friend's birthday trip to Cancun. At first, she mentioned her sister was going on the trip with her. I was totally okay, okay with so the trip. They, Fast forward four months to the night before the yeah, trip, and she mentioned her sister is no longer going. My girlfriend is now going solo to the birthday trip, and it's a girls' guys group. Is You're in a right? solid like relationship, long term relationship. You guys have been together for a while. It says two years, right? Did it not say two years? Yes, it says okay, two years. So that's what I'm saying. Just reiterate that before I go into it. I would be not okay with that. I'd be like, you, I'll go with you. You're not going on a girls and guys trip without me. I'm coming with. Okay. But we were dating for like a year and a half. We had weddings the same weekend. You went to one wedding in Mexico and I went to one in New York. I wasn't like, Oh my God, we have to go to the same one. Like, and I, it's about trust. <sighs> I guess. I don't think that it's a red flag. I think I, again, the only weird thing that I think is that she didn't necessarily mention that her sister can't go anymore. But if it's her group of friends and you know who they are, you like there's trust there. I, I mean, I go on girls trips like 
I, I don't know. I, I don't think you it's know a what red the flag. difference is when you just talked about the weddings. We both were invited to either one. We just had conflicting. Like she didn't invite him to this. Why not? Why couldn't he go? Well, that's missing in the question. Like no, we can add that invited. in. It doesn't say I wasn't invited. It said just a birthday trip. Like maybe he. I think being invited or, it, or not being invited will make a big difference in this question. Then, because if if you weren't invited, be like, what the fuck? True. No, that's true. Because like the whole weddings confliction thing that it's we because, had. Because like we had. And you always invite me to stuff. I'm like, please go right. without me. Like, I'm fine with that. But like for you to not invite me, I would think something's up. I think that's the biggest missing piece of this question. Did she invite you? For yeah. us to answer it. Because, yeah, it's like, or could you just not go? Because if you could just not go, like she initially wanted you to go and she was going to bring her sister and now she's just going because you couldn't go. Not a red flag. But I don't know. I, I don't think it's a red flag. I don't think it's a red flag. If she she invited you even i don't see in a world why you wouldn't have been invited though you know like why couldn't you don't assume at, go on to a birthday trip i don't know i know i i mean the more the merrier like i don't know why you wouldn't be invited especially if like, not a red flag if she invited you i would be slightly concerned if she didn't invite you Next question. I've been with my girlfriend for 10 years. Her 26th birthday just passed and I had a whole day planned with her. She canceled our initial plans with the excuse that she made plans with her brother, which excluded me. I soon discovered she completely blew me off. I understand that she wants to spend time with her family, but I can't help feeling extremely hurt over this. To me, birthdays mean a lot because growing up, I was never celebrated. Is it okay to feel angry towards her even though it was her birthday? I wouldn't be angry. I would, I would be upset though, or like disappointed. You know, I get that. It, it is her day though. So like whatever she wants to do, I guess. But why wouldn't she want you to yeah, be with her on like, her like special day? That's my question too. Like you guys have been together for 10 years. So how- She wants a reprieve. She's like, let me just have a day to myself. I think also birthdays are different to certain people like some people love to celebrate their whole birthday for a month while other people are like uh, dude i don't give a shit it's just another day like you work on your birthday you know but you've been with your girlfriend for 10 years how do you know how do you not know her style of birthday like is this something that she's done in the past 10 years do you usually spend her 20 something birthdays together you know like how how is this different from the birthdays in the past right because that's like what you have to compare it to but it also is like the pre-plans. Like, did she have the plan to do something with you and then blow you off? We're or saying like, well, she's spending time with family. Like, you're technically family pretty much. You've been with her 10 years. Like, you are family. I don't understand why. She also missing. Like, were you not invited to hang out with the brother also? Like, I don't. That's Context, guys. Like, yeah. we need all the deets. But again, well, I he guess. He said she blew him off. So she he wasn't invited. I guess. So yeah, I would be upset too if my girlfriend didn't want to spend time oh, yeah. with her birthday. Oh yeah, and excluded me. She canceled our initial plans with the excuse that she made plans with her brother, which excluded me. That's so fucking weird. Like I'd be like, I don't care. I'm coming. I would think. That, I just think it's odd to exclude anyone who you've been with for a certain amount of time. Like anyone who you consider boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, unless it's like specific, like girls night, guys night, whatever, you know, like you have your specific group of friends, but I do think it's weird or whatever, not the norm to include your partner for big events or big milestones or whatever, like things that you're doing, even if it's just to dinner with a group, if other couples were going, I'd be like, cool, John's coming too. Yeah, I agree. I There's, there should be no reason why you weren't invited to spend time with family because I would consider you family at that and point. And like, what were they doing that you couldn't join in on for her birthday? That's what I would ask. Like, what is she doing with her brother that you couldn't join in on? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Unless it's, again, like, I do know there are people who do like annual sibling trips or annual like sibling hangout times, but like 10, you've been together 10 years. Yeah, like you're part of the fam doesn't make sense. No. Next question. Next question. I started dating someone with three small girls and we've been dating for over six months. He wants me to stay the night at his house when he has the girls, but I don't feel comfortable because he lets him sleep in the same bed with him. 
He said he always slept with his parents and doesn't see anything wrong with it. I asked him if it was his ex and her boyfriend sharing a bed with the girls. Wouldn't he be upset? He says it's different because I'm a girl. I have refused to stay over and I think it's starting to affect our relationship. What is your advice? There needs to be boundaries. Yeah, I don't. He sleeps with it. He slept with his parents till till when? I, How long? I don't know. I guess. Just, How old are the girls? Young, I guess. Three small girls. I agree with what you said, though. You need to have, even if your parents, like even if you, these were your, your kids, it would still impact your relationship. If you had your kids sleeping in bed every night with you every single night. Like I remember sometimes if there was a storm, if I had a nightmare, like climbing in bed with my parents because I was scared, but they were very stern about like, this is it. You know, like it wasn't an every night. This is normal because what are you laughing at? I actually remember the last time. Slept that you parents. slept with your parents? I peed my bed. <laughs> and I went over and I was sleeping with my dad. Not that I'm laughing at you and then I, your bed. And then I pissed my parents' bed. And that was the last <laughs> time they let me sleep in bed with them. I double peed. I, thought, I double peed in the same night. I thought that you were initially going to say you peed in your parents' bed. And that's why I laughed. And then I was like, oh, no. Not I, your I, own bed. I doubled, <laughs> I doubled down. I was like, not only am I going to piss oh, my yeah. own bed, I'm going to pee all over my dad and their bed. And like you were sober too. Like and a sober. I was sober. <laughs> yeah. Like a sober five year old. <laughs> oh my God. I would be pissed. But yeah, I think again, if you're just dating someone that is going to impact your intimacy, your relationship with that person. So I think it's setting boundaries. But again, if that's something that he is not willing to do for you, like there is your answer. It's tough to you know, talk about how you feel on a certain subject when it comes to like a parent and their kids, you know, you're the, you're kind of the outsider. Of course, but sleeping in your bed, like, or his bed, which he wants you to sleep in too. And if you're going to be together and get married and start a life together, like that does impact you. True. You do have a say, like if he's upset that you're not staying with him, like you're giving him the reasons why, like you don't feel comfortable. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable sleeping with some person and their also, kids like, in the same even bed the biggest bed like a california king is still not like kobe takes up the entire fucking bed like i can't imagine three kids whatever we're not parents I, we don't know the connection of parent to kids or whatever but i i think you have some ground like you're you're justified in your feelings right and so all you could do is have a conversation with him and he needs to understand that it's like if you want me to stay over like i'm sorry i just i can't sleep in the bed mm-hmm. with the kids yeah Put a couple single beds around the bed. They could sleep on that. Right. Yeah. Maybe that's a solution. Like if they want to sleep in the room, put some mattresses on. Give them a tent. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Build them a fort. Yeah. yeah. And just a friendly reminder, this week's podcast episode is sponsored by Daily Harvest. Ah, fall. The season of falling leaves, chaotic schedules. And you know what else falls? My motivation to cook. Seriously, who has time for that when life gets crazy? But don't worry, folks. I've got a tasty solution for you. Daily Harvest. With Daily Harvest, I can kiss those random fridge items goodbye and say hello to delicious, quick, and satisfying meals delivered right to my door. It's like having a personal chef who knows exactly what I crave. They've got a whole smorgasbord of easy-to-prep options that make meal planning a thing of the past. No more struggling to decide what to cook for my next meal. It's all there, ready to roll. They support farmers who are all about improving biodiversity and soil health. Plus, their packaging is recyclable and compostable, make you feel like an eco-hero without even trying. So why not keep your freezer stocked with these hassle-free, guilt-free meals? Go to dailyharvest.com slash straight and score up to $65 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash straight for a feast of savings. Don't miss out on this deal, folks. Head to dailyharvest.com slash straight and make your taste buds and your wallet happy today. Next question. I, 29 female, have feelings for my coworker, 37 male. He's engaged and shares three kids with his fiance. He vents to me weekly about the issues and struggles he has in his relationship. I sit there, listen, and offer advice when I can. Part of me hopes it fails with the hopes of having a chance with him. The other part of me, the bigger part of me, wants it to work because I know that that's what he wants for the sake of the children. We are very open with each other, and he mentioned how he isn't getting laid nearly as much as he would like, and it's messing with him mentally. He says she doesn't pay him any attention unless it has something to do with the kids. I gave him some advice and tips 
tips on how he could spice things up in the bedroom and try to get his fiance to engage sexually with this him. This is the most am, inappropriate conversation I've ever fucking heard. Am I stepping out of bounds here? Is it inappropriate for yes. me to be giving the guy I like advice on how to get laid with his fiance yes. or am I just pathetic? Am I going to call you pathetic? No. Am, will I say that your morals are skewed? Maybe. I will tell you like exactly what this is. This guy is not getting attention at home and he is loving getting Facts. it from you. So what you're feeling is not him actually liking you. It's the attention. He loves the attention that you're giving him. And my other thing that I want to say about this too is you don't know what, the, you don't know what, what's going on behind closed doors at side, their house. One yeah, you're getting store. one side. So you don't know, maybe he's being a shit partner to his wife and that's why he's fucking not getting Oh, he's laid. definitely being a shit partner to his wife by talking 100%. to you about, I'm not satisfied sexually. Like, dude, fuck you. You're talking to somebody that's not your fiance about sexual matters inside your own relationship with your... Right. It's crazy. Somebody of the opposite sex also. Like, what the fuck? And... At work, he's confiding in you, and you guys are coworkers. Like, of you're single, so of course you probably also enjoy the attention. Like, but you have to also know that this guy has alternate intentions. Like, he has a family. Like, he's getting this attention from you. He likes it, but he's not being a good partner. So, for you to even hope that this fails, like, would you want a person like him anyway as your partner? I fucking wouldn't. What you're doing is annoying. But this guy's a fucking rat. Exactly. Well, it's such a little pussy male move to do this stuff. Like, I'm not getting enough attention. Like, what a what a fucking rat. You don't talk to somebody else about your personal matters. Yes, I would say you're stepping out of bounds here. Is it more... I mean, you're both at fault here. I think that what you need to do is... Cut ties while is you're ahead. Distance yourself from yeah. this person and just be like, listen, dude, we're, we're coworkers. I can't have these conversations with you. You should probably go to fucking therapy with your wife or your fiance. I wish you the best. And then again, like if they fail on their own, fabulous. But like you don't want to be the person to try to mend their relationship, give advice, or then be the person who now get catches feelings for this piece of shit. And then how you get them is how you lose them. Like I would not want to be with a person like that. So I just think you need to distance yourself and move on. I agree. Next question. I fell in love with my sugar daddy. We never had a formal arrangement, but the platform we met on was for sugaring. We hit it off instantly and continued dating for a year. And the kicker is he's married. Finally, after a year long affair, he's actually going through with a divorce. My dilemma is I'm in college and suddenly moving home for a semester to save money from renting. And he'll probably be the one helping me move. There's literally nobody else I can ask. How do I introduce him? My family already knows I'm dating an older guy. They also know I had an affair with a married man. I said they're not the same person, but let's be honest, they're not dumb. And there's a 20-year age difference between me and my sugar daddy. I'm nervous about the interaction. Well, you fucking should be. Uh, to be honest, what else could what else can go wrong? Or what <laughs> what else what else is there to say? They already know the two main things. You're hooked up with somebody who's married and you're dating somebody who's 20 years older than you. So like What's the worst that could happen? You tell, just tell him that you're with okay, him now? I also just want to say, like, copy paste from the last question. How you get him is how you lose him. Like, this man is 20 years older than you. He was paying you to hang out with, with whatever. Get your bag, girl. But you can't catch feelings if you're going to be a sugar baby. Like, you just got to understand that relationship for what it is. But I just feel like you're not making the best decisions right now. And your parents and your family are just going to be looking out for you. Can you film it when you tell your parents? Or just, when they see, see the, the this guy helping you move? And to say that there's literally nobody else you can ask, fine You movers. know what? It could be worse. You could be with a shithead that's doing nothing with their life and is a terrible person. So, you know, there's always worse people out there. But he's married. He, oh, like, oh, wait. I th no, he's going to divorce. Okay, he's getting a divorce. Did he get a divorce yet? Like, people love to fucking talk about getting a divorce and not actually get a fucking divorce. Yeah, I guess you should find out if he's actually getting a divorce And he was first. married when he was hooking up with you. Like... All this... All that's in the past at this point. Oh, my uh, what God. I'm saying, but it's, it's still who he... Like, yeah, making those decisions. She's terrible for doing that. He's terrible for doing that. But, like, look how much has already happened. Family already knows. They're getting a divorce. It's like, 
Well, you're already three fourths of the way done. You might as well go the whole way. My thing is, go the distance, this would baby. be different if he wasn't married and having an affair on his wife to hook up with you. I know, and like making you feel like this sense of hope, like, oh, I'm gonna get a divorce. I'll help you move. Like again, you're young, you're hot. If if he wasn't married, I'd be like, go for it, girl. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, get with your rich sugar daddy man. But like, he's not, he's not trustworthy. I just think that you need to take this, it, this, this relationship for what it is at face value and just be like, hmm, how did we meet? And who is this person? And what? And wh who, what, when, and where? If this is already something that you're planning to lie to your family about, probably not the best idea. I don't think that you should. The people who love you the most and probably know you the best, if they're going to give you, if you're already like assuming the, the, the opinions that they're going to give you. And that's why you feel like you have to lie. Does this make sense? Like you, it's probably not a good decision. Then if you feel like you already have to lie going into it, I honestly just want to see this train wreck unfold. Like it's, it's already disaster. You just commit to it. Go ahead. See, see what happens. I feel like I'm going to need updates on all of these. Cause you're asking, you're like, how, how do I, how do I introduce him? That how was do I the navigate question. This? That was the question. The fact that she's like, like, I know, she's already committed. Pump the brakes. I'm like, don't, don't even move forward <laughs> do with this relationship. I'm like, do it. I want to see this. Oh my God. I mean, again, if he was already separated from his wife, like you do you, but like, I would make sure that he gets a divorce before moving forward at all. Oh my gosh. Anyway. How fucked up is my haircut? <laughs> I saw a video of us from like three years ago that came up on like TikTok where it was like on this day three years ago, your hair was so much darker. Oh, like the fact, thanks. I mean, I'm going <laughs> straight <laughs> shots fired. Would it like I'm going so great too? Like, are we stressed? Well, when you when I put hair gel in, it makes my hair darker. You didn't have hair gel on in this uh, video. Oh, okay, that's Sweet. how I noticed it because I was like, oh, we're just going gray, John. I'm, I have more gray for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> so do I. For sure. I need to start going and getting professionally dyed because it's like my well, sideburns. Do what you want. Age, age however you want. I think you'll be beautiful either way. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> you literally have to say that, but thank you. Next question. A colleague who has become a good friend of mine announced around a month ago that she was getting married at the end of this year. I've never met her fiance and he has zero online presence and apparently doesn't allow her to take photos of him. She says he's a private person and doesn't want his life on social media. She asked me to plan her bachelorette party with friends here so we could celebrate with her as we won't be there on the wedding day. Apparently only her family is going to the wedding and none of his friends or family will be there. I asked her for his number so I could ask him some questions for a game we're going to play at the bachelorette and she replied, I don't want to get him involved. I'm sorry, but does this guy exist? If he does exist, how has he not met any of her friends and just isn't a part of her social life? She is such a bubbly, happy person, but in recent months, she's completely changed and doesn't seem like herself. I don't know how to approach the situation without hurting her feelings for doubting who this guy is or if he really exists. What should I do? Is this somebody she works with? It's her friend. Though, yeah, right? a colleague. Plot twist. Good... Plot twist. She's just doing it for like the... To party. To just hang out for friends. Time off. Time off for the bachelorette. Maybe time off. Maybe time for the wedding. I Set, doing this whole thing for like a wedding. What? I no. I just have so many questions. Like, there's not a single photo of him. She gets PTO for the the wedding. There's not a single photo of him. He's obviously has a second family. Uh, no shit. You didn't think that? I immediately thought that. No, like, this a, guy's second got a second family. family. No, I think that your colleague might be lying about him existing. Then what is she doing? Why make it up to do what? I don't think he exists. I don't think he's a real person. Okay, so you don't think he's a real person. I think he has a second family. I just, I think that even... Why is she making it up? Not one photo of him. Even if he has a second family, I'm sure they have a picture together. What is, what is your theory of why she's making it up? Maybe she's lone. Like people, people make up illnesses to get like for attention. Go yes, 
No fucking way. The people, there's, oh, I don't remember what it's called, but there is some something something syndrome where parents lie to their kids about having like terminal illnesses so that they could get like make a wish and get all these like donations and GoFundMe's. And it's like, there's a girl who tried to kill her mom over that. People are crazy. I don't know the exact story or what this is called, but there's a name for it. And not that this girl has that, but she might have a version of it. <laughs> cray, cray. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess one or the other, I think. So do you think that she should ask? Like, how should she find out? Oh, you know what you should do? Why does she even care? Why does she care? She's fucking planning the bachelorette party for her. And she's she asked for the fiance's phone number. And the girl was like, I don't want him to get involved. <laughs> if you want me to be your maid of honor. Not maid of honor. Because again... No one's invited to the wedding. She's not going to the wedding. What? Exactly. So I have to do all this work. I'm I'm not going to a wedding. I yeah. have to pay for your yeah. bachelor. Fuck you. That's Go how fuck I would yourself. feel too. I'd be like, okay, I will plan the bachelorette. Number one, no. once I've met your fiance. Number two, if I'm invited to the wedding, like I'm not going to. I, I just think that the is so audacity of that person to ask you to be a maid of honor, but like you're don't get to do anything. You're not. She's not asking her to be the maid of honor. She's the just audacity asking. of this person to ask you to do her uh, bachelor bachelor party. party. Get the fuck. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god, people are so entitled. Well, no. That's why, like, I'm like, it has to be. She's this crazy. This has to be a lie because the She's fact that you've cray, never cray. seen a photo of her fiance, you haven't. It's not even like you haven't met him. You haven't seen a photo of him. There's no. Even if she may, gave you a fa a number, it could be fake. It could be her pretending to be this guy. I think what you need to do is find out his last name. Just like conversation, be like, "Oh, are you gonna change your last name? Oh, what is his last name? Oh, does he have siblings?" Find out as much as you can so that you could do digging on the internet. There's no way that none of his family members don't have social media. Be a PI. Yes, That's crazy. You got to do some digging and then see if there's You're where such he a went good to college for saying yes to even setting up her bachelorette party because she probably no was like oh it's just like for our colleagues like it's a small wedding that they're having like you know but now it's starting to add up for her and she's like wait a minute this shit isn't adding up it doesn't make sense like is he real so either he has another family or he doesn't exist i'm still so hung up on the fact that she's not even invited to the wedding but she wants her to do all this work i mean <laughs> you lost your mm -hmm. mind <laughs> you lost your mind. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think that that makes sense. I think people need to meet. I think people need to be more blunt in the world. And just be like, like yeah, I'll plan your so... bachelorette for you if you invite me to the wedding. If yeah. I knew who your fiance was. I just think if like you gave me his phone I get, number to help I get plan. being caught, like caught off guard in the moment, but then rebuttaling to that. Like, don't feel bad. Like if somebody asked me in the moment, I'd be like, uh, yeah, I guess. And then like once I process it, I would call them back and be like, actually, you know what? I don't feel like doing that. And you know, who don't feel the, bad. Who are the other people going? Because maybe ask them. Be like, has no any, one? Have, just her parents? No, no, no. I'm not. I meant not the wedding to the bachelorette. Because then I would ask the oh, other people invited to the bachelorette yeah. and be like, have any of you seen a photo of this man? Have any of you met this person? Like, you have to do more digging. Find his last name. See if he has siblings. Where did he go to college? Does he have friends? Like, who is this person? You have to. It's so easy nowadays to do FBI stalking on your own. Like, I, I believe be in like, you. Oh, yeah, Jessica, she I had an imaginary Girl, friend like, growing let up. me know. I'll help you. Like, I'm so invested in this. I need to know. I need to know. Yeah, Jessica had an imaginary friend growing up. His name was Billy. <laughs> and now they're engaged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know. Dude, whatever. Next, next, Keep next. Keep us posted. Please write back. I need to know. I need to know. Okay, next question. When to disclose a shady past? I jumped headfirst into the dumbass pool in my youth. When I was 17, I got married and divorced within a year. At 20, I repeated that same mistake and I have three children from those two marriages. I got my life together somewhat and married again at 26, but within months we decided to split. Yep, that's three marriages before 27. It's been 10 years since then. I'm 36, my children are all teenagers. I'm independent, have a successful career, and make pretty solid life choices. I've been in two serious relationships that led to nowhere because they didn't want to be number four. 
I don't fault them for being concerned. I would be if the tables were turned, but we're talking 15 years since I was that person. There's no way to change the past. I don't disclose this info on date two or anything, but eventually I feel like if I don't say anything, it will be something they feel like I've lied about. I've stopped dating the last few years because of this, but I would really like to not heed into the second half of life as everyone's single friend. So my question is, as I'm getting serious with someone, how and when do I divulge the shit show of my early 20s without it hindering our future? First off, I think you're right. You have grown and learned a lot in your past. I mean, you're not going to make the same decisions that you did before. I do think, why why does it have to go straight to marriage? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, can you not just like tell these people that you're dating that you're only looking for like a partner you're not interested in marrying. you don't have to be alone in your second right. half of life mm -hmm. but you also don't have to do the traditional like i have to get married and like, like out of anyone you should know that like john and i talk about it all right. the time we're like I'd never get like, married again as great as we love marriage like it's a piece of paper like yeah there's maybe some tax benefits but not enough to to go through that has nothing to do with why i wouldn't get married again though no yeah same. my mine is just like I think I found my person, whatever. And we, to be married to someone, to be with somebody 24 seven constantly, it is so much work. And it's just like, it's rare. Well, it's okay, rare. but like, you, that's a relationship then that, that you're talking about. But like, she wants to be in a relationship. She just is talking about marriage. To me, I would ask, if I was you, I would ask yourself, why? What is it about marriage specifically and not just having a right. life partner that is so important to you? Because if you come to terms with that and say like, maybe I don't need a marriage. Like I think letting your partner know, I just want, I'm not looking for a husband, but I'm looking for a life partner. And then who knows if like you explain to them what your past is and they say, I don't care. Then you can have that conversation about potentially getting married again, you know, because I think that that puts it in more of a way of understanding for that relationship, that other party to be like, oh, okay. Like she has had this experience in her twenties. She's a grown person marriage. You know, she was looking for a commitment. I just think I wouldn't harp on the marriage part. Mm -hmm. I think exactly. just focus on the relationship with that person. And if it goes that route, then it does like, let it happen naturally because like you could be in a serious relationship. You don't have to get fucking married. Exactly. So just like, one day at a time, just pace yourself. Don't be stressed about that conversation. Right. And then I think also when that conversation does happen, you can like honesty is the best policy. But I think if it's the right person for you, they'll understand that you were question. Because here's the thing. It's happened. The last two relationships she went in, she's like when she brought up the marriage thing, they didn't want to be number four. So my question is, are you the one that's bringing it up? Like, think about think about this. You're in this well marriage, maybe. Right, that's but that's I'm, my point of saying like you should make it clear that like you're not maybe no, looking for another no, husband. No, 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 no. She's the one who's brought it up in the last two serious relationships about being married three times, and then those relationships go nowhere because they don't want to be the fourth. Mm -hmm. My thing is, don't even bring it up. If they want to get married, let them bring it up, mm -hmm. and then you could tell them about the the that just hey, I've been married three times. I love you. Like, sure, I would love to be married to you, and like. Cause that's when they're ready. Right. And like nothing will stop that if they're ready, but you just like preemptively talking about it could just not be the right time. Right. Cause it also like, it is part of your past and it's like, you don't disclose all of your past partners to someone like, and even when they ask, like, and I don't, I'm not saying that you should hide this information. I mean, if they ask you, they're like, yeah. Oh, of course. I'm not saying that you should hide this information, but it's like, it's not like you're still married. It's not like you're going through a divorce. Like this is part of your past. I think that you just move forward with relationships. When the topic comes up, you could just let them know you're looking for a life partner. If marriage is in the future, fabulous. But that's not like what your intention of being with someone is. If they love you, they'll stay with you. Right. If they truly love you, seriously. So, oh, the other thing though that I do want to like say about this question is if you haven't read the book, The Seven Hus Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, she had seven hus husbands. So, you know, at the same time, no, all at different times. And like reading the title of that book, I was like, oh my God, how the fuck did this bitch get seven husbands? And then like each of them seemed justified. And you're like, oh, okay, okay, did that makes die? sense. What? Like, did did die. Don't ask questions. Did they die? It's a book. Is it a horror? Like, not did all she of them kill died. Them no, it's not a thriller. Oh. It's a, just about like a Hollywood starlet 
It's such a good book. But yeah, anyway, you could uh, be her if they ever make a movie. <sighs> Does that sound so exhausting? Like seven, like, dude, just call quits. Why? Yeah, but... Why the fuck do you want to even go through that torture? When you're like connected with someone, if you feel like... And maybe they've never been married before and that's important to them. I mean, in the book, there was like all different reasons as to why people got married in it. You've gone through seven dudes. You're the problem. Well, that... You gotta you're, read. The, you're the problem. No. Don't put someone else through... That's what you think. You, you're the nightmare. That's what you think. You have to read the book. Is this a true story? I'll read it to is you. Is this a true no, story? No, it's not. I was just saying, okay. because if this is a true story, there's no way that... They were each one of those guys. John, had a problem. I'll read it to you. Each I'll one of those read guys it again. Problem. I'm telling you, okay. it wasn't. It's not what you think it is. In the book, like there's, you really go into it, and you're like, how do you end up with seven? It's not what you think it is. It's very good. So far fetched. <laughs> not really. Kind of like when you're reading it, you're like, you know what? Like what this I makes understand. me feel like is she's probably like he's too annoying, he's too hairy, he's too short. <laughs> His dick's too small. John, it sounds like those are your insecurities that you're projecting no, right now. I'm not hairy. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> what it is. The, right, the, right. The, yeah. Little dick part. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. My husband's dad unexpectedly passed away about a month ago. He left to go up north for the memorial, and I stayed home to finish out the work week. I planned on going the night before the memorial, staying one night and leaving after the memorial to come back home. Well, I found out that he's been sleeping in his mom's bed with his mom. Weird, but whatever. They have an oddly close relationship. I told my husband my plans to come up there for the night. And I said, I'm not sleeping with you and your mom because that's weird. Thinking he'd get the hint that it's weird he's sleeping with her anyways. But nope, didn't get the hint. He told me I would have to stay at his sister's house and he would stay with his mom. His mom and his sister live on the same property, maybe two football lengths away from each other. So he won't stay with me and our baby, our family, for the one night we're there because he needs to sleep with his mom in her bed. I also mentioned we could all stay at his sister's house together, but that was a straight no again. Let me also mention that I was told to get out of our house about a month ago because his mom was trying to come down at the last minute and I called her stating I didn't want visitors that weekend, hoping we could plan her coming down a different weekend. Am I wrong for thinking this is all weird or are my feelings valid and this whole situation isn't adding up? I understand he needed to be there for his mom, but having to sleep in her bed with her and not staying with your spouse and daughter, let me just say, he also only sleeps in his boxers. I, what does that last part have to do with anything? Like he's not, you know, in fully, he's not fully clothed. What do you mean the last part? That last part? The boxer part? Oh, like when he sleeps with his mom? When he sleeps in general. Like he just sleeps in his boxers. He's not. That part is irrelevant to me. The, the Either rest way, is... <laughs> the whole thing Sorry, is... the rest like... What he, the fuck? With the box be, part, I was like, okay, whatever. He could be in a snowsuit. Yeah, it still doesn't be weird. fucking matter. Cool. <laughs> he could be in a snowsuit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, interesting the part that family bothers cultures me, though, and dynamics here. Is like, okay, maybe, maybe again. No, Alex, no, I'll, no, no, I'll talk. I'm, I'm it's just... my, you read the whole question. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, get the fuck out of that. That's also, creepy. no, the part that bothers me though the most, in addition to like, okay, sleeping in bed, like maybe you could write it off for some weird, like, oh, grieving. I don't fucking know. But you were told to get out of your house a month prior because his mom was trying to visit. Like, what? Why would you have to leave because his mom was coming into town? Have you heard? Okay, going on a tangent. Have you heard that there are like grown men who Wear still diapers. breastfeed from their moms? That doesn't surprise me. Boobs. None of this surprises me. There's so many weird fucking people out there. The the whole fetish of adult men wearing diapers and wanting to be babies and shit like that is like fucking crazy stuff out there. Have you ever had weird vibes with your mother-in-law and your husband's like relationship before? Or is this like the first time that you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Listen, if you're, if you're asking us this question to know how we feel about it, I'll let you know right now. Well, no, all she said is, am I wrong for thinking this no, is weird? No, you're absolutely not wrong. Get the fuck out of that. What's with the houses next to each other is what I want to know. So well, they're very, they're a close they're very family. Close. Okay. Maybe like, are you close with the sister? Can you ask what it's about? Like I, I'm just trying to put myself in this girl's shoes who's writing in 
And I would be so blunt with you. I'd be like, what the fuck? That is so weird. Like, why do you have to sleep with your mom in the same bed? Like, give me any answer. Give me any response. I would talk to the sister, too. That's what I just said. Yeah, like, ask your sister-in-law, oh, too. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, what's up? What's but like, going on? Has he said why? Does she sleep with the mom? Like, is it because the mom, like, is she on, like, you know, could she, like, off herself? Is that why? Like, is she on watch where it's, like, she can't be alone? Cool. Sit in a fucking chair exactly. next to her like, bed. Again, similar to the daughter, sleep on the floor. Like, put a put a sleeping bag somewhere. Get a cot. No. In bed? Fuck that. I want to know if the sister does, like, do you sleep with the mother, too? Or is this just, like, a mother There's something? a lot of, like, ways that you can assume that this goes. I think you just have to straight out ask your husband. And then you have to say... Do you have sexual this... relations with your mother? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then you say, this just makes like me the feel other question, Just like the other question, you, you just cold ask him that question to his face and just look at his body language. Does he get squeamish? He's fucking his mom. But you have to ask him in person. Ask him in front of his mom. <laughs> This really? is so fucking crazy and ridiculous. Like, get out. Get out of this whole situation. I would leave this person. It, oh, my God. It's so eerie and creepy. And uh, it's a wazzy. It's a woozy. I'm at a loss for words. Like, I want to try to... I'm My, my problem-solving brain is trying to come up with something as to why... You're trying He's to doing like, this. I'm oh, trying to justify it. I'm like, advocate. yeah, like there's got to be a reason, but like, I can't really think of one unless again, she's on, she's very depressed and like, there's, you know, a risk of her doing Doesn't something. Doesn't matter. When my grandmother was going through all that shit when she was older, I had a chair and I was next to her and bed. And watched her. And I watched her. Also, how did you find out he's been sleeping in bed with his mom? How'd you find that out? He probably told her. He probably told her and it's like, okay, this gets me out of it. I got ahead of it by telling her that I'm sleeping with my mom. He might be drinking his mommy's milk still. <sighs> wow. What the fuck? Well, best of luck. That's that's wild. X. That Damn whole it. Before X, I meant to say, and in the beginning. Guys, give us your reviews. Oh! <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> John just whacked his seltzer off the table. I think they'll get a little dry. Like, subscribe, email, comment, give us all the reviews, and now we'll go in our icks. One of my icks is what I just fucking did right there. I just smacked the drink over. God. You just Ugh. don't have control, 100% control over your limbs all the time. I know. It's a thing. I'm a fall risk in general. You are. Uh, my, my ick is you just gang up on me when we're in public. That's John, what it is. That's my ick. No, All, the don't. first thing you do is just... John, you do this If to someone yourself. says something to me, you're like, yeah, okay, guys, fuck John. You have to listen because John goes out of his way to target other people. So I feel like I have to stand up for the people. I'm one for the people because you literally will go, hey, I fucking made this chicken dip. Try it, <laughs> I bitch. didn't say like and that. And that's why you... And I'm like, John, you have to be nice to people. And then you think I'm ganging up on you because I'm like, be nice. How did I actually say it? You said... No, no, no. Set this, how did I actually say it to him? Set the scene. You go, hey, try this fucking dip. I made it. I didn't say it like that. I go, hey, man, I made this fucking dip. Try it. No, that is not how That's you exactly said it. That's exactly how I said it. You said fucking try it. Yeah, I just said that. No, not I made, I made this, this fucking dip. Hey, I made this dip. Fucking try it. You oh, made, that's what I did. So that's like pretty aggressive. And you didn't say it in that nice... Well, tune, you know what? Like, he liked the hey, dip. Man. And it was good. I just think that there's a way to communicate with people and you come across to everyone as a big bully. And so I have to be like, no, don't talk to people like that. It's a bonding. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. It's a bonding thing. You don't it, like it. It's different when you do it with like our asshole friends in New York because they get that type of sense of humor. But in LA, you're going to get fucking blacklisted. <laughs> I'm like, he's kidding guys. Whatever. You know, if you're just, if you're very sensitive, uh, I'm joking around. I make fun of people I like. I know. So I'm not. Don't. Don't talk to me. But what then. I'm saying is like in a relationship, you have to have like both sides. Like if if I was also an asshole with you, people would be like, wow, they fucking suck. <laughs> like I have to be oh, the nice person. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Because thank God Alex is around. you rude for the both of us. So I like let you be that person and I have to be the nice person. Like first you, time you sour have to than know a, you know, your position. I made this whole, I made this massive Dip like this and massive. And I made a dip. whole bowl of yeah, pasta but your salad. Your pasta salad sucked. <laughs> I made <it> <laughs> exactly like that's you. 
Like, and I would never say that to you. Like, case in point. I'm just nice. Like, I'm sorry that in each, every relationship, there has to be a good and a bad. And you're just the bad. Okay. What's your ick? <laughs> My ick has nothing to do with you, again, because I'm fucking nice. Oh, because you're so, you're an angel. <laughs> so I've been finishing Yellowstone and I just finished season three and I'm like about to start season four, but it ended with Rip, Rip digging up his dead mom and taking Getting the engagement ring. ring for Beth. But I was like, wait a minute. I thought that like Rip's dad was a piece of shit. Like Rip killed him again, guys. This is a show. What does this have to Spoiler do? Spoiler alert. Yeah. No. So I was like, ew, number one, like I don't, would not want your dead mother's ring. But it's meaningful to Rip. But it came from a bad no, relationship. Rip has no money. Like Rip's like, I want to give you something special in my life. And he, that's what he had. That's all he had from his family. He loved his mom. I know he loved his mom, but, but like. that's the symbol for him. My it's not question, the relationship. Though, is, okay. Yeah, I get it. it but like. Oh, I just crushed you. Would you argument. want. I wouldn't want. If I was Beth, I'd be like, this ring has bad juju. But your dad not, was not literally. not Beth though at that point. It's like, I understand like this is special to you, Rip. And so nope. as a team, okay, but like you're gifting that like bad, ju- like if this was, I was just thinking about it and I was like, bad if juju, this was that's, us, that's such bullshit. No, I don't think so. I'd be like, I need to sage, sage this ring or something then or bring it to some, like that was such a terrible relationship. If anyone has bad juju around them, it's Beth in general. A little more sprinkled in is not going to do anything different for her. I don't know. I just, if I was in a relationship, if you were like going to dig up like your mom and get her ring and give it to me, I'd be like, cute gesture. Like, thank you. But like, like let, let's trade it out then for something else. I don't want Selfish. that. Selfish. It was an abusive relationship. Inconsiderate. Rip, Rip killed his dad because he was abusing his mom. His dad gifted that to his mom. So it's really from his dad. His dad picked out that ring. I'd be like, I don't fucking want that ring. I don't want it. Oh, you're going to get destroyed in the comments for not so. being caring or sensitive. To it's not rip. a money thing. It's not a money thing because I totally get Seems that. Seems like you're being kind of flashy, Alex. No, because they could <laughs> exchange that ring for something else. Like, or I wouldn't even need a ring. I'd be like, your love is enough. Beth asked him to marry her. Mm-hmm. So clearly she doesn't care about like the traditional side of things. So, Alex, if you want to be insensitive, that's okay. All right, let's Guys, go on to like, a review. John wants to talk about being a team player. You are not a team player. <laughs> Every time that I say anything that's like a hot take, according to you, you go, mm, I can't wait for you to get ripped apart in the comments. Like, I've never said that to you. Can I read my review now? Or are you going to do no, anything No, go else ahead. Like, okay. These are other nice people who... These are nice people. I would is, probably this enjoy This is a nice review, except they gave us four stars. I think when people click, they're clicking. Unless, you know... I think they meant to give us five stars. No, read a five star review, then don't read a four star. This was a review. really good one. Okay, <sighs> fine. Sorry. But it was a good one. But you gave us four stars. So we only read five star reviews. We only read five star reviews, baby. Yeah. So relatable and funny. Five stars. Heart MB20. I love the way you guys have marital bickering on the show. It's so relatable and funny. You keep things real, and I can feel the chemistry between the two of you despite your different perspectives on things. I'm glad you don't always agree on how to handle a situation because it gives options for the listener. Thanks for always giving me a good laugh. Perfect way to end because we just finished this in a bicker. love and hate each other. It's so true. That's hashtag marriage. We actually did get a shit review. Yeah. And it was about someone who um, is single and didn't like our bantering. And I wanted to be like, no, like this is what being in a relationship is. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think it is? You're just gonna be frolicking up the hill, picking dandelions and shit together, twenty four seven. Dandelions. What? I don't know. It's the way you said it. Dandelions. How do you dandelions? Say it? Dandelions. Dude, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Like, subscribe, email. I want all the reviews. Five stars, not four. Hello, give it to me straight podcast.com. If you want to reach us, go into the show notes to ask an anonymous question. And you can find us on all the socials that I give it to me straight podcast. Okay, yay. See you guys next week. Love ciao, you. Ciao. Bye. Bye.